the ravenous blood batter beast of Thag. I want to know the young maid as well. Very well, we shall send her to your room later on. Please humour me, Intelia. I want to befriend all the denizens of your wonderful garden. Lovely as you all are, I would rather not consign myself to know only seven people in the whole garden. I turn around to find the young-looking maid standing behind me. May I have your name now, miss? I have a stubborn streak. Speaking to a maid at a dinner meant for royalty is without a doubt uncouth. Perhaps the error is right and I've lost my manners in exile. However, my mind is already made up. I resolved before coming here to befriend everyone I met. I want to know her, no matter how humble her place here is. My father once told me that if someone owns nothing else, at least they own their name. A person's good name is their honour and their dignity. Nothing should stop them from sharing it with others. Outside the garden, because of my failure and subsequent disgrace, my name is less than dirt. But this girl hasn't done anything wrong. The rules of the oblivious garden would strip her of her name. I won't be party to that. I'll be in the kitchen during that party. I want to allow her the dignity to give her name to others. I want her to experience the small pleasure of having them use it. She looks embarrassed. The princesses sound shocked and confused behind me. You surprise me, Your Excellency. Oh, she doesn't look pleased. I turn to see Intelia hiding behind her fan, but a voice suggests a smile. You might be more entertaining than we expected. I'll allow you your odd request. She points to the maid with her fan. Please introduce yourself. What? It's all right. Go ahead. Intelia is good at making people feel comfortable or slightly intimidated, one or the other. The maid walks up to face us. Finn, Finn, Vinette. It's, it's nice to meet you. Ah. Bang. Well, now I know her name, but she bowed so quickly she smacked her head into the table. That looked like it hurt. She takes two days steps backward. Her eyes are filling with tears. <laughs> oh, wrong voice. <laughs> Plebeians. I don't need to turn around to know who said that. Clap, clap. Someone at the other end of the table is applauding. It's the Eastern Princess Lynn. So she is paying attention. She stood up. She still has her head down, but she's clapping. Lynn, is she applauding Finn? Finn covers her face with her hands. Tears run through her fingers. Thank you. You did well, Finn. We shall not kill you tonight. Sniffle. After Finn has wiped her face, Lynn stops her applause and resumes her seat. Intelia signals for the other maids to bring in the next course. Lynn continues to ignore the conversation around her. Now that everyone has been introduced, let's have a toast of welcome to our new fencing instructor. A maid brings in a tray laden with toast, laden with filled wine glasses. We each take one. To Irel Rice, I hope we have a lot of fun getting to know him. Cheers. Even Liera, whose face slightly less hostile at the moment, stands for a toast. She still hates me. I need to find some way to soothe her displeasure. And Lynn. Even though she has a glass in her hand, she still looks like she isn't really participating. Maybe I should stop overanalyzing them. I hope we all have a lot of fun as we as I get to know you. We raise the glasses over our heads. Cheers.
I return to my room alone. The only sounds are the songs of the cicadas from outside and the crackling of my fireplace. The dinner party was a success. By the end of the night I was able to make the acquaintance of each of the princesses. Nobody treated me as an outsider. <laughs> Maybe you should stop creeping on the princesses and maid. No, I don't think that's going to happen. Now I'm trembling in my bedroom. I had grown too accustomed to be viewed by others as a sinner, a failure, and an outcast. Lying on the bed exhausted and alone, I start to think out loud. Even for a princess, there is something special about her. She really stands out. Diana Sirabusier, a noble princess with the royal name. Her behaviour tonight wasn't that of a noble who had received her training in the etiquette almost since birth. Furthermore, she is a royal house known for placing especially high value on one's comportment and disposition. It was though tonight she was a totally different person from the elegant and refined princess I'd met in Roseland just this morning. There is something inexpressible about her personality, something I find comforting. Something she radiates seems to encourage the people around her to trust her more than they naturally would. It makes them like her more than they want to take care of her. I don't know what kind of power this could be, but it seems a benign one, fueled by her gentle nature and kind-heartedness. That is well. After all, we will be spending more time together later. I close my eyes. I'm exhausted, and before I know it I've fallen into a deep sleep. Falling. 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 I feel like I'm floating in a shapeless void. There is darkness everywhere I look. Am I dreaming? I once heard it said that when a blind person has spent years alone in the dark, they will start to imagine shapes to fill the void and dispel loneliness. I'm beginning to understand that sentiment. The darkness begins to swirl around me, deeper in some places, shallower in others, creating shapes and forms that I'm not sure are actually there. I detect a sense of aggressiveness, like something awful is hiding in that darkness. I want to close my eyes and turn away, even though neither action would change my surroundings. However, I can't move my body in this dream. Even my eyelids are beyond my control. I can only look straight into the darkness. Deep and shallow shadows intertwine to sketch curves that suggest something both familiar and abstract. I can almost recognize what's out there. If only I could see clearly. It's like looking down from a balcony at a couple below. You might see their lips moving, but you can't quite hear their words. Wind blows beside my ears. These are not the mild winds from the woods this morning, the strong winds from up atop of the Roseland, or the kind gales we felt out on the plains. Something catches my eye. My head is pulled in the direction of what I saw. Suddenly there is light and I see that the refreshing breeze I felt is stirred by wings. My heart is filled with joy at the sight of the figure they belong to. The figure has noticed I am watching her. Her mouth opens as if she wants to say something, but in the end she just smiles. That melancholy smile penetrates whatever defence my heart had left. So beautiful. A beauty that should not exist on earth. Enough beauty to steal a man's breath away. Her hair, her dress, those wings. If flowers had their own gods, their perfect beauty personified, surely this would be the goddess of lilies. I hear the doorbell ring, waking me from my dream. Well, Your Excellency, are you up yet? Do you need someone to help you dress? A lady maid's voice comes from outside. I remember Finn telling me that she would wake me up this morning. 
I take out my pocket watch. It is already eight o'clock. I still have my clothes on for the party. I was so exhausted I fell asleep last night. Ah, hold on, I'll be ready in a moment. What a strange dream. I shake my head and slap my cheeks a few times to wake myself further. Today is my first day officially on the job. I can't afford to lose face in front of the princesses. 